Good morning. Good to be with you this day as we gather together on a beautiful day which the Lord has made. Indeed, we rejoice in it. Um, take a moment, if you would, look around a little bit. Say good morning to those close by. Welcome to God's house as we gather here this day. In the midst of the joy of summer, so we rejoice and pray definitely for those many on vacations and then enjoying family time. We indeed uh, wish them well for sure. A few announcements laid before us this day. Um, thank the Jensco family uh, in memory of Larry for our bulletin sponsoring today. Appreciate that for sure. Uh, a couple of things that came in to me late this week. We have a community meal coming up on July 7th. And so we have, it's going to be a cookout. So beans, potato salad, veggie tray, dip, cup, watermelons, desserts, and chocolate, and, and, uh, and, and white milk. So those are all things that we're looking for. Kathy Hall um, is the contact for that. So call the office if you have any interest in getting some of those. Um, also, hopefully you got a half slip of paper in your uh, with you when you came in today. Um, the call committee and myself met with President Lewick this past week. And so those sheets are open now for the congregation to nominate someone that you may know who is a pastor who you might think would be a good fit as an associate pastor here at St. Martin. And so um, you'll notice that uh, July 15th is the deadline um, for those to be turned in. So um, we have that as well. And uh, it's an opportunity if you know of anybody that might be a good fit um, for that position. So we've got some time to, to work through those things together as well. Notice in our worship bullet that we have the prayers, which we have in there every week. Again, if there's someone that you'd like me to pray for that is not included, um, let an usher know, and uh, they'd be happy to let me know before the prayer, so I would be happy to include them with us this day. Also, one other announcement before we begin. Um, you'll notice on the, the front portion, we got that black and white picture of a, of a church sign, a digital sign. Last week, I uh, made a point for those of you who are here that we were a few thousand dollars short um, to take care of the sign that the trustees would love to have, five foot by three foot, the, the, the sign. This week, we've had some offerings come in. I think we're pretty close, not quite there yet, and so, but uh, it's looking really good that we're going to be able to um, install that sign that's a little bit larger. What a witness that will be able to bring to the neighborhood, and of course, uh, um, to the community. So, exciting time. Um, so if there's an opportunity to, to, that you'd like to support that still, um, that is definitely a possibility. Otherwise, lots of other things coming up here in the near future, which are listed before us in our, in our worship bulletin, and, and we will uh, look at those and, and uh, come together as well. With that stated, we begin with our opening hymn, hymn number 907. God himself is present. Again, hymn number 907. The Lord's blessings as we worship him. Thank you.
absolution for this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again into a yoke of slavery. Confession this day. If your preference is to kneel, please kneel before the Lord as we come to Him in confession at this time. Otherwise, please just be seated. Lord God, our gracious Father, we confess that we have not walked by your Spirit. Instead of using our freedom to love our neighbors as ourselves, we have served our own selfish interests. We have chosen to live as our sinful flesh desires, instead of as your perfect law requires. Forgive us, Heavenly Father, by the mercy you show us in the death and resurrection of your Son. Fill us with the fruit of your Spirit, so that we who belong to Christ Jesus may walk in the way of love and worship. In his name we pray. The Spirit of God anointed Jesus to walk in perfect obedience to the Father's commands. His death upon the cross and resurrection from the grave proved that His grace alone gives His presence, provision, and purpose to all who belong to Him by faith. Therefore, in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand once again with me as we continue to the intro of the point. This day. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. And we hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace to his people, to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, and glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, author and giver of all good things, Graft into our hearts the love of your name, and nourish us with all goodness, that we may love and serve our neighbor. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue the readings appointed for this day. The Old Testament lesson for this, the third Sunday after Pentecost, comes to us from 1 Kings chapter 19. We see Elijah thinking he's all alone, and yet God reminds him first and foremost that he is there, and of course there are many others as well that God has provided for him to bring him comfort and assistance in the cause, of course, for our great God. Behold, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. 
and I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel to be king over Syria, and Jehu the son of Nimshi you shall anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha the son of Shaphat of Abel Maholah you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. And the one who escapes from the sword of Haziel shall Jehu put to death. And the one who escapes from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha put to death. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there and found Elisha the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen in front of him, and he was with the twelve. Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak upon him, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? And he returned from following him, and took the yoke of oxen and sacrificed them, and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen, gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and went after Elijah and assisted him. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Our epistle lesson comes to us from Galatians chapter 5. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh, for these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries and dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to stand with me once again if you're able as we speak responsibly the verse appointed for this day. Hallelujah! When the day is drew near for him to be taken up, The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him who went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make preparations for him. But the people did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them, and they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, leave, leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. 
Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated as we sing our next hymn, hymn number 688, Come Follow Me in the Savior's Fake. Again, hymn 688.
know of a certain technology that has come to pass over the past 10, 15 years. We call it Facebook. Facebook is a great opportunity for us to connect with people who maybe we haven't seen in years and to share stories, share pictures of, of family and activities and all kinds of things to keep people in the loop. Now there are some things on there that we would prefer not to see. Maybe some things that are posted that we don't like or maybe there's that one person that posts something every three minutes and you kind of wish they would just back off a little bit. But Facebook is a good thing and can be a good thing, even for us and for our church. I have a page and I enjoy sharing things, especially things here at St. Martin that are going on. And our church and our school have Facebook pages as well that people can follow. As we look at our gospel lesson for this day, we look at something different to follow. It's not just to pay attention or to scroll through a little bit, but truly we are called to follow not Facebook, but a face. And that face is our Savior, Jesus. Of course, so much more than just his face, but his life, who he is. And so you see the sermon title for today. The question really that's being asked is, whose face are you following? What is it that you are following first and foremost in your life? My prayer for us this day is that we will be reminded of who Jesus is, and he is certainly worthy to be followed as he calls us to follow him in our lives as well. As we look at this text for today, we're going to see some similarities to what happens this day when people are confronted with Jesus, who he is, what he has done, and where do we go from there. In the midst of that also, we will see how hard it is, the cost of discipleship, the cost to truly be all in for Jesus and to follow him as he wants us to follow. And yet in the midst of that, as we follow the face of Jesus, as we follow him, we see his face in love, his comfort and his peace as he leads us according to his will, which is always for the best of you and me. So as we dive into the story, we find ourselves Jesus sending out some disciples, to make preparations in Samaritan land. And as they go, people reject him. Now we know that's nothing new. There are all kinds of people in Scripture that rejected Jesus, but there's a little nuance to this, which maybe isn't so small, but I want to point out to you. This first town, the why. Why do they reject Jesus? Well, it's in part because of where he was going. Remember that first verse? When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. Samaritans didn't worship in Jerusalem. They worshiped on Gerizim. And so because Jesus was about Jerusalem and heading in that direction, they rejected him. Might sound silly, but that's the truth. They were like, this is where we go. And if your face, if your motive, if your plan is Jerusalem, we're out. We are not with you because your face is going to the wrong place. Of course, the response of the disciples was a little bit ordinary. Hey, can we just call down some fire from heaven? That'll take care of them. That'll show them. Of course, Jesus rebukes them and says, it's not how I work. And yet we see something in that. People who reject Jesus because he's not going where they want to go. We see that today as well. Millions upon millions of people, even in other religions, like Jesus, like the concept of Jesus 
and who he is, at least in part. They liked that he loved people and he was about the underclass or the, the ones who weren't the chosen ones. They liked that. But they don't like all of Jesus when he says, follow me completely. They found that in the text as well. As Jesus was along the way and said, follow me, or someone would come up and say, I'll go with you wherever you want to go. But, or I've got this, or I've got that. Jesus calls them to follow me. And as harsh as it might be, their minds aren't completely in. Well, yeah, it's good to say goodbye to your family. It's good to make sure things are in order, but in the text, Jesus is saying, to truly follow me, to be my disciple, you have to be willing to give it all up. And by you saying, well, wait a little bit, or let me do this first, they were showing Jesus they weren't ready to do what he wanted them to do. And that, for us, is the harshness and the cost of being a disciple. Like I said, there's lots of people who like the concept of Jesus, but they want to take him in bits or in pieces. You may have heard me say this before, that some people like to use Jesus like a buffet line. We go to the buffet, we don't take everything, at least most of us don't, but we pick and choose what we like and we leave what we don't. That's the temptation in following Jesus this day. I like this little bit of Jesus, and I like what he did here, and I like what he did over here, but he wants me to do that. Mm -mm. He says, this is how we are to follow him. Well, that's going to cause me grief with family or friends. I, I can't do that. And so the things that we bring to the table, just like back in the day, keep us from truly following the true Jesus. The Jesus that says, be all of it and not just a part. In the text, some saw danger, what they needed to do, the work that needed to be done. For others, it was appealing, but they had other things they had to do first. And so they themselves got in the way of their following of Jesus. As I said before, the question that comes to mind is this. What is it truly like to follow Jesus? What is it truly like to follow the face of Jesus? Like I said, it's not rejecting him first and foremost and saying, you say you're the son of God, you say you're the savior of the world, you're not, some do that for sure. It's not to say, well, I'll follow you as long as I get all these other things done first and you know, God will get to you later. That's not what he's looking for. He's also not wanting us to just take a portion or a parcel of who he is. He wants us to believe that he truly is all that he says he is. And what he gathered is truly what we are to believe. He did set his face toward Jerusalem in hopes that many would believe him as he that they would receive him as their only source of salvation. Not from within, not from something I can do to somehow make him feel better about me, but to take it on his terms and in his way. For he is the way, the truth, and the life. The only way to the Father and to life everlasting. Here's the difficult part. Being a follower of Jesus is really hard. It's really hard to follow him as he wants us to follow him. It's really hard to stay on his path when we're distracted by so many other voices and so many other paths that we could walk upon. Even though God's calling us to go this way, we go that way. 
Galatians chapter 5 talks about that. There's a laundry list of things that can keep someone from the kingdom of God. Now you might look at most of those as I read them to you and go, haven't done that, haven't done that. But I would dare to say all of us at some point have fallen short with one of these. I know I've been guilty as well. We haven't fulfilled the whole law as Paul talks about to the church in Galatia. So now what? God has called us into his communion, brought us as his people, gifted us and called us to follow him. And we look at this and other things and say, I can't. I haven't. I haven't been following your face like you called me to do. Jesus' face, a part of who he is and what he is all about, has been centered in you. Even when we're running away from him and clinging to those things that are dark and evil and of the flesh, Jesus' face is still focused on you. Even when you're looking away, he's looking at you. He's looking to bring you back like the good shepherd of the sheep so that you might be reminded of who you are and whose you are and what he has done. Pretty soon, St. Mark will be celebrating 150 years of God's grace in this place. The messengers which God has used in so many different ways to share that. The blessing of God for generations. His face being followed this place. Certainly that is something to rejoice in. Yes, it's true. In the midst of following the face of Jesus, in the midst of following him as best as we can, we will still fall short. We will still make mistakes. And yet our Savior continues to call us back and says, my face is on you. And that face which is on you is filled with love passion, renewal and strength, comfort in the midst of the difficult days, for I am the one who heals, I am the one who saves. Facebook can be a lot of fun, and we can even take opportunities to follow groups and organizations to see how they're doing. Reminds us once again. Look upon his face. Follow him as he is. That's my prayer. Is that we will continue to follow the face. More than that, of course, who Jesus is and what he has done, so that we might continue to live. That we would love what he did at the cross and at the empty tomb and how he ascended into heaven so that we would live. May we always, always see the face of Jesus because we know where he is leading us, to life everlasting with him. Until then, as we follow him, may we be quick to bring those struggles to him. May we be quick to repent of those things. May we be quick when we falter to the things of the flesh to say, guilty, knowing God has gifted us with his love and forgiveness and brings us those gifts, those fruits of the Spirit. And then walking his path, be confident in knowing you can. Because you have Jesus in you. His face shining on you. Remember that, the ironic blessing? May his face shine upon you. The face of God. We have that as believers. I pray we remember that, that blessing, which is ours, as we follow our Savior Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all our human understanding, guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. I invite you to stand with me as we continue.
proclaiming our wonderful faith today with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, the light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again. this week. We do pray this has been a difficult week for us in many ways. Um, we thank God for the preservation of life and what has been going on, and we're so blessed that God has moved hearts to, to look at it that way, and yet in the midst of the culture, the context of today, um, it brings out so many emotions, and so we pray that God will work in us compassionate and loving hearts as we share and as we care in the midst of all the things going on in our lives. With that stated, let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have created us in your image, called us into fellowship with your Son, Jesus Christ, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us to know that you are always with us, guiding our steps, providing for our lives, hearing our prayers, and answering us in ways that are for our good and that bring glory to your name. May we always continue to follow Lord, in your mercy, Amen. you reign over all the universes, King of kings and Lord of lords. In you, Lord Jesus, all things are held together. In you, Lord Jesus, we live and move and have our being. You provide wealth for all those who belong to you. Grant us hearts to receive your word, hands to extend your love to others, and feet to walk by your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. Holy Spirit, when we feel lost and alone. Remind us of your never-failing love. Instill in us the readiness to be led by you and the purpose that you give to all who follow Jesus Christ. Send your church out into every corner of the world to proclaim the good news of life and salvation in our Savior's death and resurrection. And until the day where he comes again, grant that we never grow tired of sharing the gospel message. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, we pray your blessing upon all who lead and govern us, for all who protect us from harm and danger, and for all who work for the well-being of our communities, our state, and our nation. Heavenly Father, this day we pray for our country as it continues to need healing. We thank you that we can continue to proclaim and that you've worked to remind us of how important life is from the womb all the way to someone's last breath. We thank you. Continue to work in our hearts to uphold the lives of those yet born and those who are born. That we would uphold a compassionate heart to all. Work in us and in our country this day as well that we might continue to come together in your name. To follow your face in all things. Which ultimately always will lead to you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Oh Lord, we ask your blessings. Send your church out in every corner so that those might know you. Be with us this day as well. Make your presence known in the families and in the lives of our children. Remind those who are homebound, hospitalized, or ailing in any way that they are never alone. Today we ask your blessings upon these, your servants. Be with Verna Albert, Marilyn Blanke, Jean Handridge, Walter House, Jim Carlson, Linda Kirshner, Bentley Kepke, Dwayne Kusman, 
John Maddock, Joe Novak, Wendy Perry, and Jeff Pingle, Thewendal Schley and Jeff Schneider, Diane Schrader and Marilyn Siebert, Gary Simmons, Brenda Weddy, Jenny Yeager. Be with these, your servants, and all those who we name before you in our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Into your faithful hands, O oh Lord, we commend ourselves and all for those in whom we pray, ever trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with the bringing forth of the offerings, and as we sing together our offertory song, verse 1 of hymn number 782, Gracious God, you send great blessings. stand with me as we continue with the preface to communion today. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. You lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. By his Holy Spirit, we who belong to Christ Jesus are called to live lives of purpose, as you provide us with your presence and your never-failing mercy. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Receive him who comes to us in his body and blood. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do a remembrance of me. The same way also took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. O Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, 
So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this saving gift of your Son's true presence in our lives through his body and blood. Strengthen us to walk by your Spirit in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. words one more time today. For freedom, Christ has set us free. And turn, therefore, and do not sin again to the yoke of slavery. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated as we continue by singing our closing hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise, hymn number 802. 